Hello everybody. The topic of our lecture today is management of deep bite malocclusion. Now the learning outcomes of this lecture is the student should be able to analyze the etiology and clinical features of deep bite malocclusion and as well as explain and formulate the provisional treatment plan for a deep bite malocclusion. Now, what is the normal incisor relationship? Now, in centric occlusion, there is a normal horizontal overlap between the upper and lower incisors with the upper incisors in front of the lower incisors and this is referred to as the overjet. There is also a vertical overlap between the upper and lower incisors and this is known as the overbite. Now, what is meant by a deep bite? When the vertical overlap between the upper and lower incisors are excessive, that condition is referred to as a deep overbite. Now, deep bite can be divided into two groups based on the etiology. That is, they can either be skeletal deep bite or a dental deep bite. Now, this, each of these can be either be a complete deep bite or an incomplete deep bite. So, what is meant by complete and incomplete deep bite? Now, in an incomplete bite, the lower incisors will not touch the upper incisors or the palatal mucosa. Whereas, in a complete bite, the lower incisor touches the upper incisors or the palatal mucosa. Etiological factors of deep bite can be considered into two groups. One is genetic and the other is environmental. Now, the genetic is, factor is expressed as an abnormal growth pattern and this abnormal growth pattern is usually due to the counterclockwise rotation of the mandible or a clockwise rotation of the maxilla or a combination of either. And this abnormal growth pot pattern is commonly seen in a class 2 division 2 or type of malocclusion. Now the environmental factors are usually due to extrusion of the anterior teeth with or without intrusion of the posterior teeth. Now the clinical features of skeletal deep bite. Extraorally uh, ideal phase can be divided into vertical uh, thirds or horizontal thirds. Okay, And this horizontal thirds are uh, considered to be the normal facial proportions. Now in a patients with skeletal deep bite, the lower third is reduced in comparison to the middle third of the face. Now the intraoral features of skeletal deep bite is the same as a dental deep bite. Now cephalometrically we will see an increase inter incisor angle, an increased ramus height, a reduced maxillomandibular uh, plane angle or a Frankfurt mandibular plane angle and the man mandible is seen to be rotated upward and forward. Now the clinical features of a dental deep bite uh, intraorally we will see obviously an increased overbite there is a decreased overjet especially in a class 2 deep tooth type of malocclusion. The upper anterior teeth is extruded while the upper posterior teeth is intruded. There may be gingivitis on the lower labial or upper palatal gingiva due to a traumatic bite. Now, diagnosis of a, a deep bite will require clinical examination, the analysis of study models and the lateral cephalogram. Okay, how do we treat a deep bite? 
Now, the general in general uh, reduction of a deep bite is achieved by intrusion of the anterior teeth or extrusion of the posterior teeth or a combination of both uh, these measures. Now, usually intrusion is achieved by using very light forces which is around 12.5 grams for the lower incisors and about 15 to 20 grams for the upper incisors. Uh, extrusion of posterior teeth will require heavier forces. Mm. Now, this can be achieved with uh, removable appliances by the use of an anterior bite plane. Now, the anterior bite plane can be a flat anterior bite plane. The action is the lower incisors contact the anterior bite plane and this causes disocclusion of the molars and the disoccluded molars will over erupt and thus reduces the deep overbite anteriorly. Now, treatment with, uh, can also be done with using myofunctional appliances such as an activator Bionator, a Frankel function regulator 1A or a twin blocks. Basically what is done is the interocclusal acrylic is selectively trimmed to allow eruption of the buccal teeth and this will reduce the deep overbite anteriorly. Now fixed appliances can also be used to treat uh, deep bites and this is done using either intrusion arch uh, burst by burststone or Ricketts utility arch and uh, the principle is this arches engage only the terminal molars and the incisors and the premolars are bypassed. Now this causes uh, brings about intrusion of the incisors thus reducing the deep overbite. It can also be achieved with use, using arch wires with bite closing uh, curves and by using a curve for speed in the upper arch wire and a reverse curve for speed in the lower arch wire. This causes a relative intrusion of the incisors but mostly the deep by reduction comes from molar extrusion. The arch wire can also incorporate anchor bands or also which is known as tip pack bands and these bands are placed just mesial to the molar tubes. And this also causes relative intrusion of the incisors. Now, in an adult non growing patient, uh, deep bite correct, uh, correction by conventional methods are usually not successful and are prone to relapse. And in this uh, non growing patients, one uh, alternative is to do orthognathic surgery. Uh, orthognathic surgery is usually uh, LEFO1 surgery doing by down fracturing the maxilla and interposing bone graft in the fracture site to keep the uh, maxilla in a position where the uh, where the deep bite is uh, reduced. The aim of this surgery is to um, correct the vertical maxillary deficiency which causes the deep bite. Okay, these are the references for this lecture. Thank you.